What are you gonna do with your literature degree? read fashion books. For those of you who don't know, I'm absolutely obsessed with style systems. I am incredibly curious about this whole world of fashion that so few people really knew about a couple of years ago. And since I started talking about Kibi body types, there has been this huge wave in love and appreciation for color seasons, especially, as well as these other systems, many of which started as books in the 1980s that have since been unearthed on the internet and given this whole second lease of love. And it's unlocked for me a real fascination with and love for style books. So. I'm gonna break down some of the books that I've been obsessed with and have actually changed my personal style forever. The first one is Color Your Style by David Zyler. I've made videos on this book. Essentially, the premise is that you take colors from your features, so your hair, your eyes, your skin, your lips, and these help you find different colors. So it helps you find your essence color, your romantic color, your dramatic color, your energy color, your tranquil color, and your neutral colors. And in the second half of the book, he also has these, I think, 24 different style archetypes, which are based on color seasons, as well as your personality, the two are combined together. I would say if you're interested in crafting a visual identity based around color, this is the place to start. It's such a fantastic book. It's really great fun. There are so many different examples in here of different colors, not visually, but he kind of names so many different colors. There's also loads of really fun exercises like this. So I identified my essence color as dusty rose, my romantic color as raspberry, my dramatic color as lavender, which I had totally forgotten about. I should totally bring more lavender into my wardrobe. My energy color is dead him. My tranquil color is moon green. My first base is Payne's gray. My second base is mushroom and my third base is pearl white. He also does a really great explanation of how to find these colors that's really fun and engaging and it's one of the most fun style books that I've ever worked with. The Curated Closet by Anush Karis. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. This is like a one-stop shop for organizing your wardrobe. One of the most helpful insights for me was how to create your outfit formulas and then using that to create a wardrobe structure as well as this amazing flow chart which shows you why you don't have anything to wear. I would say if you're a beginner with your wardrobe and you're wanting to have a complete wardrobe refresh and find your style in the process through your wardrobe as a tool, this is amazing for that. What not to wear. I got this on eBay, I think. This was a TV series, a British TV series in the early 2000s, led by Trini Woodall and Susanna Constantine. Constantine? Susanna Constantine sounds right. And it was quite a brutal TV show by today's standards. By my understanding, people would elect one of their friends to go on the show who needed a style makeover and Trini and Susanna would rip into them and tell them what they needed to do with their clothes in order to help them with their kind of insecurities or problem points. And there are definitely some brutal sentences in here which made me gasp. On the whole, the actual underlying advice is really helpful. And I follow Trini Woodall now. She's one of my heroes. I love the way she creates content. I think she's incredible. I think she's such an inspiration to so many women. The way she, she is loud and bold and unashamed. I'm gonna try and find some highlights from this book, which made me gasp. For example, lovely picture of Susanna here. This is a worst skirt. Gathered waist, why do you want a bulky skirt? Isn't a bulging stomach enough? I will say so many of these insults seem to go to Susanna as well. Just because she didn't have that particular 2000s tall look, she's a little bit curvier. She has more of a bust, but she is in no way an overweight woman. Not that that would excuse the language in this, but it does give me an insight into what it was like to be a woman in the 2000s. And I'm glad that I was a teenager in the 2010s. So look, I just want to say there are some really rough bits in this book. And if you don't think that's for you, fair. But some of the advice, for example, this page here, looking at Trini, you can see that these shorter trousers aren't doing much for her. They're cutting her in half. And these longer trousers are much more flattering. And the explanations behind why a lot of these things work uh, still stand today. So if you can look at this objectively and kind of have fun with it, go for it. If you think that the slightly cruel language is not for you, I don't blame you. But I found it very helpful. Color Me Beautiful. This was, I want to say, one of the founding books in the 80s of the color season trend and is the foundation of the ideas of like the essences, the romantic, gamin, um, ingenue, natural, uh, those types. This was kind of the beginning of that and it includes both of those in here. There's also a companion book called Color for Men, which I also own and is really fun. They have some really fabulous color palettes as well as some brilliant <laughs> 1980s pictures. But I also think starting with this book is a really great way to get rid of some of your assumptions about the seasons. I feel like today, a lot of, for example, pictures of springs, they all have dyed blonde hair. Whereas this shows you what a spring 
might naturally look like. If you want to know the foundations of Color Seasons, this is totally a book to get. And also if you love looking at older style books, it's a really good time. Now the next book is one that I don't actually own. It's one I read digitally. And that is Leopard is a Neutral by Erica Davis. I last year met Erica Davis at Gerald's, which is our local department store. She was doing a book signing. So essentially Erica Davis was a fashion editor and a fashion writer. And I feel like this quote really sums up the book. There are classic rules and then there's a layer of intuition and experience. And then on top of that, an emotional, how do I feel today? It's about combining the rules with creating a style we love and breaking the rules, how to break the rules, when to break the rules. And I love the title, Leopard is a Neutral. I feel that it really, again, sums up the book of expanding your idea of what classic can be and what style can look like for you. Fearless, Trini Whittle's new book. This is both a fashion book and a self-help book all rolled in one. Obviously my favorite section is more the second half of the book, which is a lot of styling principles. As you can see, it's got really great illustrations in it. The color palette pages, I think are my favorites. You might know, but I'm a fan of Trini London makeup. I had a session with Trini London in 2020, almost like two weeks before the pandemic hit and we had to go into lockdown. So I really see that as a pivotal moment in my life. I have been a loyal Trini London user ever since because Trini just knows color so well, even though she doesn't subscribe to, you know, typical color seasons, she kind of has her own that she's created. So for example, this is a cool palette and she has some colors in here, which I would say break the taboo of what kind of colors, for example, a summer could wear even though she doesn't call them summers. I just think that is so beautiful and I think it's such a great guide. There's also a lot of information in there about skincare and it's just like all the basics of how to look after yourself. And if that was gonna be your only fashion book, I think that would be a great place to start. Lastly, Wear It Well. I've been making loads of videos on this book recently. I'm a big fan of Alison and she has three principles in here which really stuck with me. One is the AB Closet Editing System, which is where you identify the regulars in your wardrobe as well as the pieces you really want to wear and you use those as the foundation of your wardrobe. And essentially, the idea is that you organize your wardrobe based on that and then you compare your hows with your regulars. She also has a theory called your three words, which is where you take three very specific words and use those to guide your style. And then lastly, which I feel no one really talks about is the nine essential pieces, which is essentially nine pieces that every woman should have in her wardrobe. If you're looking for a closet revamp and a real way to guide your style, I would say this book is a really great place to start. If you've enjoyed this video, you should check out my book club. It's a part of the community that I built over on Substack called Style Scholars. You can sign up for free for my weekly email newsletter and once a month we have a book club where we read a new fashion book so if you want to get involved with that the link is in the description try it out for free first see if you like the newsletters and then maybe consider joining the community thank you so much for watching i will see you next time